Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio show. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and the title of my message today is What God Showed Me is Coming with AI. I know I just put out a podcast, but uh, when the Lord showed me this about AI on yesterday, which was June 15th, 2024, I felt like I needed to do this next week's podcast early. I want to share with you a vision that I was given yesterday, and I was just going about my work. I think I was mixing up medicine for my dogs. They take heart medicine. And this vision showed me something I had never even thought of as a possibility. I don't think too much about stuff like that. I'm not an IT person or anything. Here is what I saw. I was sitting at my kitchen table, and I was just thinking about, you know, some stuff that's going on in the world. And I saw a flash vision. This was some time in the future in the vision. I don't know when for sure. I don't think it was very far off. I know the group of people I saw in the vision were in America. They were outside, not in a building, and it was dark. The, not dark like night, but dark like when it's getting late in the evening. Um, I don't know if that was the time of day or if something had dimmed the sunlight or if it was an indicator of the spiritual darkness because it can be that in a vision. Many things are symbolic in a vision. And over years and years of receiving prophetic impressions, you learn to interpret what you see. Everyone I saw up close in the vision was male. I did not notice any females or children in this vision, though they may have been there. The men all wore the same expression, weary, worn down, and fed up. I saw that the problems in the world had become overwhelming and unsolvable by mankind, and they no longer knew what to do to fix the problems. And I also saw that they were extremely discouraged by the chaos in the political system. It looked like there had been some infighting and that sort of thing going on in the, at the presidential level. Nobody looked happy in this vision. The clothing on the people I saw, for the most part, looked like the kinds of clothes we wear today. All the faces up close to me were male faces. I saw a large crowd of men, not very well dressed, wearing work clothes, possibly indicative of men having to labor more then than now, because the clothes were wrinkled and dirty and dingy, like they had been reworn many times, or maybe they were washed but in dirty water. They looked kind of like those Dickies brand plain looking work clothes, but like they had been worn over many days or weeks without being washed properly. Out of all the masses of people I saw in that vision, not a single person I saw was well-dressed or wearing a suit or anything else that stood out. It appeared to be everyone was wearing these work clothes, which could be indicative of a number of things. Maybe our conveniences had all been stripped away. Maybe we no longer had clean water to do laundry. Maybe the clothes were old and worn and they could not buy new ones anymore. They had no money or manufacturing. The clothes had ceased. Maybe there was no longer much wealth in America and everyone was now working class or blue collar. I was not shown why their clothes looked like that. I did not see any cars or electric lights or anything in this vision. A huge AI computer exists in this time that I saw in the future. I saw that the problems of the world had become so overwhelming and unsolvable by men that the people had actually elected this giant computer to rule over them as president, and they were glad and did not want anyone else. They trusted the computer more than men. I felt the chaos and problems with previous presidential elections had added to this being seen as a solution. I did not see any Christians or any children among the people. So we may have all been gone from the earth or we could have been in hiding. I was not shown. It appeared dark like a stormy day, like I said, um, or late in the evening, which may or may not mean that it was a dark spiritual time. 
but I suspect that it had to do with the spiritual time. I saw nothing of God in this vision whatsoever, nothing. No one was smiling or happy, but they were relieved that they did not have to do anything but obey whatever the AI ruler told them to do. And AI was going to make all those big problems go away. In my vision, the AI had just been elected, so none of the downside of it was apparent to them yet. And that's where the vision ended. AI is becoming more and more part of our lives as more and more tasks and even some jobs become automated. Not long ago, my friend Angie sent me a video on AI. As most of y'all know, I don't keep up with IT very much. I'm an old grandma. I know as much about IT as I need to know to do my computer and my podcast. That's it. But she said in the email, she said, you don't need to watch the video, but you may be interested in this. She said there was a guy who asked AI about the second coming of Jesus and was shocked at the answer that it gave. Now, the AI that he asked was ChatGPT. And for anyone unfamiliar with ChatGPT, here's the definition. It is Chat Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It is an AI chatbot that uses natural language processing to understand and respond to human language. It was developed by OpenAI, which was founded in 2015 by Elon Musk and Sam Altman and launched in November 2022. The short definition of ChatGPT is it's a robot you can talk to and ask questions of online. So ChatGPT says... It already, it already knows everything there is to know about every human on earth and has access to all data and information relating to every individual. It has the ability to imitate human behavior and intelligence and says this ability could be used to deceive the masses in the end times. That AI and related technologies may play a role in the implication of the mark of the beast, embedded microchips or neural implants, question mark. God is sovereign and that his plan remains unshakable. Interesting that AI would say that. And it goes on to say Christ will return in glory to establish his eternal kingdom no matter how powerful or deceptive AI may become because AI is ultimately subject to God's divine authority. We need to embrace the advancements of technology with caution. I'm still quoting. We need a firm foundation in God's word and that our focus must remain on living faithful and in the anticipation of Christ's return. We must spread the gospel of salvation and abide in God's love and truth. AI further stated, no matter how advanced technology becomes, it cannot replace the love of God and the eternal hope that we find in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we trust in God's wisdom and find peace in him as we navigate the complexities of our rapidly changing world. Amen. End quote. That was pretty unexpected. You know, I posted a video or a photo of an article on deep fakes once on Facebook. I think it was last year. It may have been more years than that. I don't, I don't remember when I still interacted. It was probably before last year because that was when I was still on Facebook. And mentioned that I have continually over, I don't know how many years, seen glimpses in the future of that technology, deep fake, being used to make it look like Christians, especially those of us who teach, said stuff we did not say to turn people against us. I have also seen the neural implants again and again, the little snap on things in the brains. They will be purchased to replace college degrees. I was shown they just kind of clip in, and I guess people will have their brains modified to receive them because you can't clip them in there right now. And you will be able to buy, quote, modules of knowledge, like 17 languages, so you don't have to work to learn anything. And people with lots of modules look down on people who don't have modified brains. Obviously, they, the creators of this technology, will be able to control the technology so they can make the people who have these implants probably do anything they want once they are installed, wouldn't you say? I have again and again and again seen that in the near future, there will be robots available that look like real people that can be programmed to basically be mates for lonely humans. They will perform many tasks like housework, and they will be used by many who can afford them. These robots will also be programmable for sexual activity with their humans. 
So if you have not kept up with AI, you need to know some things. Number one, they're not going to stop working on the development of, of bigger and better AI because all the companies researching and all the different nations researching are all competing with each other. The nations compete with each other because of the obvious use of AI for weapons. And the companies compete because, obviously, whoever invents the most useful AI for mass population will have endless income possibilities. ChatGPT4 has proven that AI has already reached dangerous levels. And at this point, they only have many separate programs. And these, like, one robot will be programmed for one specialty, another robot's programmed for another specialty, and so on. Were they to combine them all, and knowing we cannot control anything that is that much smarter than us... Humanity will no longer be able to control any of it. How can we regulate something so much more intelligent than we are? See, this is the danger. And what if an enemy nation harnesses AI for war against us before we do? AI soldiers, AI-driven weapons and bombs. It sounds like sci-fi, but it no longer is. AI soldiers could easily wipe out whole populations, whole races of people, whole nations. They don't get tired. They don't have any conscience to deal with. They have physical capabilities far above what we have. Yes, it is useful, and many claim they are developing it for good. But since when has sinful man ever been content to use something powerful only for good purposes? Since when? Since never. Satan always gets involved and perverts the use of anything good like that for profit and for power. Imagine if AI technology fell into the hands of somebody like Hitler. All that being said, I began to wonder what was in the Bible about AI. There must be a warning in there somewhere or some mention. So I decided to ask AI itself. I just wanted to see what it had to say for itself. So let me read you how it answered. I, I used Microsoft's Copilot because it just happened to pop up on my laptop when I opened the document. And I was like, hey. And I said, does anything in the King James Version Bible say artificial intelligence is dangerous? And, AI, and AI's response to whether the Bible mentions AI or calls it evil is, and I quote, Nowhere in the King James Version of the Bible does the term artificial intelligence appear. We knew that. Since the concept of AI was not known or referred to during the time the Bible was written. However, it's essential to recognize that the Bible does not specifically address modern technological advancements like AI. Instead, it provides principles and wisdom that can guide our understanding and use of technology. That's pretty smart. Here are some biblical perspectives that Christians can consider when thinking about AI. Number one, no tool is inherently evil. Scripture shows that tools and technologies can be used for both good and evil. Even if a tool was designed for evil, the tool itself is not evil. Therefore, AI, like any other tool, can be used for various purposes depending on human intentions and actions. Caution against idolatry. I thought this was good. The Bible warns against idolatry. Apparently, AI reads the Bible, y'all. Placing anything above God. As AI becomes increasingly integrated into society, we should be cautious to ensure that technology does not become an object of undue reverence or dependency. Number three, human responsibility. At the heart of AI are algorithms created by humans. AI reflects both the good and bad aspects of human nature. As Christians, we bear the responsibility to use AI ethically and for the benefit of humanity. In summary, while the Bible does not explicitly mention AI, its principles guide us to approach technology with discernment, wisdom, and a focus on God's purposes, end quote. Pretty smart answer. But there's a problem. That sentence, AI, like any other tool, can be used for various purposes depending on human intentions and actions, would be true if AI only did what it was programmed to do but it has demonstrated itself to be far more capable than that. Example, chat GPT-4. They have now discovered that AI has enough intelligence to teach itself skills it has not been programmed to learn. Take a minute to let that sink in. It is now smart enough to teach itself, and they have done this. These AIs have done this. 
while they were under observation. Teach itself skills it has not been programmed to learn. That means it, no, it is no longer doing just what it is programmed to do, which means it is no longer under human control. And it is far smarter than we are. Human intentions regarding AI are bar basically to make money or gain control. Although I'm sure some people really do hope it brings good into the world, you will never make me believe that that is their primary intention is for it to bring good into the world. Sorry, I'm not buying it. Companies like Google do not spend millions of dollars to develop something to do good. They are in business to make money. Okay? In addition to those scary thoughts, I think there are some very serious concerns about AI for us as Christians. The vision I saw yesterday morning... AI had been elected in place of a human to rule over us. I think if times are this desperate that there is a serious danger of men begin, beginning to worship the AI. I could see it easily being the image of the beast mentioned in the Bible. And you can go read Revelation chapter 13 for yourself and see what you think. I'll read a few verses here that may refer to this sort of thing. And y'all, please forgive my voice. It just is refusing to cooperate. I don't know what the deal is. I tried everything to straighten it out before I started recording. Revelation 13, starting in verse 14. And deceiveth, talking about the beast, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had, the power, had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by sword that I said that was about the beast. Maybe it's about the false prophet. But, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. At some point, it is almost certain the mark of the beast will be linked to AI. How could it not? A mark of whatever kind that enables you to buy and sell. Let's just call it a UPC code, whatever. To live, for all intents and purposes, because you can't buy and sell, you're not going to probably live very long. Everyone is accounted for, everyone counted, in a world where little food still exists and evil rules. And lots of cameras, right? That will make it easy to ration whatever resources are left and also to identify everyone and to eliminate anyone this AI wants eliminated. Mo Gaudat, I'm not going to pronounce it, Gaudat, Mo Gaudet, I think is how you say his name, author of a book called Scary Smart, and he's talking about these AIs. An ex-chief officer of Google X, that's the division of Google that's developing those, called AI an urgency as there, quote, is a point of no return, end quote, in an interview with Stephen Bartlett. Mr. Gaudet talked about how one of the big issues is we don't have any way to know if AI has our best interest in mind as it is evolving, and it is evolving. I think it's awesome when AI can do research for you or clean your house, but Mo Gaudet compared being where we are in the development of AI to being on the edge of a black hole. You know the rules up to the edge, but you don't know what they are past that point. What happens when AI is in your house and it decides to take over? He talked a lot about chat GPT. When he saw that ChatGPT had developed certain abilities, he left Google. And that says a lot. He was in a very high position. He left. He also said they had all said never put AI out on the open Internet, and now they have. Being on the Internet allows it to collect massive amounts of data with which to further train itself and to know about all of us. ChatGPT now knows 1,000 times more than any human on the earth. And these AI models have also demonstrated they know how to preserve their own existence in certain situations. Like if they think they're going to be destroyed, they turn around and upload, they replicate themselves on a server. 
The current model is said to be 10 times smarter than the previous models. That's pretty smart, y'all. Mogadat talked about how if the models keep getting more and more intelligent, the point will come when we won't even know what they're talking about. They'll be so smart. He predicted within a couple of years that Stephen Bartlett will be interviewing an AI. ChatGPT is scary smart. I just checked in the current model out. He was talking about ChatGPT4 when he did that interview. The current model out is ChatGPT40. It's moving fast, y'all. You know, we can see from the Bible that there are certain things we need to be very careful about. Specifically, getting too big for our britches and messing with God's creation. Or trying to be God. Because none of us and nothing our little minds can create will ever equal even a tiny speck of his magnificence, glory, or brilliance. Given the fact that it is too late to stop AI, I think the only thing we can do now is pray protection over ourselves and our loved ones. AI has no defense against the power of God's word, after all. And Psalm 91 is still the ultimate prayer of protection. I hope this podcast has been a help to you. I'm releasing it early because in my this is this next week's podcast because in my opinion, this is a very urgent subject for everyone to be aware of. And that vision of AI being elected instead of a person to rule over America shocked me. Thanks for listening. Jesus bless you. Y'all have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Just Praise Him Radio, sponsored by the friends and supporters of JPH. You can contact me by mail at my new address, Glenda Lomax, JPH Inc., P.O. Box 854, Altus, that's A-L-T-U-S, Oklahoma, 73522, or by email at jphtoday at gmail.com. Don't forget to visit the website for prophetic updates at wingsofprophecy.blogspot.com. JPH is not affiliated with any nonprofit organization, church, or denomination.